There you go. All right, so let's have some fun. Uh, appreciate you doing this. And yeah, it's pretty damn simple. Do you want to count me down from five? Yeah, let's and do it. You know how to count five, it down. Five, four, three. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Get a Word In with me, your host, Josh Wagner, connecting with friends from different locations and vocations, discussing yesterday, today, and beyond. And today, we're going beyond to the land where stages are not required to strut your stuff. Miami, 305, and we're entering the world of the fabulous drag life of Carla Croqueta. Bienvenido, chiquitita. Es un placer verte. ¿Cómo estás? Estoy espectacular, papi. ¿Cómo tú estás? Siempre bien. Y mejor ahora. Contigo. Oh, un poco. Entiendo. I live in Miami. I got to speak a little Spanish, right? If you don't, you're never going to get by in this city, honey. Well, it's a pleasure to have you here today. And Carla, the way I, I, I do the intro, I do a little dinner table intro. So may I do one of you this evening as you grace this table? Are you trying to eat me on the table, sir? Not till later. Let's start off with a little appetizer. Here's a little way to start. Dinner table introduction to Carla Croqueta. AKA Jose Garcia, AKA Carla Croqueta, Miami born and raised, was crowned the ultimate Miami drag queen of 2019, graced the cover of the Miami New Times in 2019 because she was also awarded, awarded the best drag performer of 2019 in all of Miami. Truth be told, show producer is Josue's favorite hat to wear. And this individual has many, many talents, but most importantly, constantly spreader of smiles, love and laughter. It is wonderful to have Carla Croqueta joining us today on Get A Word In. How are you, Mike? It's an honor. Thank you so much for having me on your show. I really appreciate it. What did I leave out? Anything? No, that was actually really good. I feel like so flattered that all those things were what you Google searched about me. <laughs> Google search. That's not true because I've known Carla for more than six years. I've been to shows she's produced. I've seen what she's created in terms of community. And for me to connect with somebody who really represents this city, but also so much what it is to gather people around them and express their true art form through a community of the drag queen force that Miami is. It's so great to link with you. I want to start with a quick story from you. You don't know, but I'm going to ask you, what was your most embarrassing drag moment ever? Oh, my God. So I have, like, my entire drag career is an embarrassment. So the last 10 years, you could just chalk that out to my most embarrassing drag moment. No. So, like, there, there have been a lot, but there's definitely one that I remember specifically. I... I don't currently, but I used to wear nine and a half inch platform heels all the time. I'll grab them in a minute and show you. They're massive shoes. They're like the size of my face. Um, and I would just wear them everywhere. And so I was standing at the bar and I kept bragging on the microphone with the wireless mic. Yeah, I could walk around in these stilts and ain't nobody going to stop me. And I was just strutting around this entire wet, sticky Miami floor. Um, and I put my leg on top of the bar and I'm very flexible and I'm very like, I'm, I'm, my balance is on point. And I put one of my legs on the bar. But when I did that, they were opening the service door for the bar. So oh, my no. hand. Oh, was no. Like, <laughs> so I literally, while I'm on the microphone talking about how I confidently I could walk in these heels, there's literally a spotlight on me. The service door opens and I kablam fall right onto the floor. Wipe you out. hear the microphone like, <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> All right. I think that that is pretty embarrassing. I would have just wanted to see your rebound, your get up from that, because it would have been definitely like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wasn't that a purpose? Oh, you act like I didn't crawl back to the stage and twerk all the way there. <laughs> all right. So what we're going to do real quick, location wise, know you're in Miami. Is there something unique to your neighborhood, your home that you think everyone should know not being where you are? Where, where, what's your location? I live in North Miami. Yeah. And um, personally, I live in a wildlife preserve and I didn't even know that shit. It is so cool. I think it is like really unique. Like I live in Miami, but as soon as I walk out of my condo and I walk, I think it's like not even a full mile um, to the right. I literally have like a nature trail with like mangroves and manatees and like it's the bay. It's yeah. amazing. It's like beautiful. So I think that that is one of the most luxurious things about where I live. I live in a wildlife preserve. Beautiful. So we have the, the the queen of the jungle in North Miami roaming around, right? Because I see that lion on your necklace. What is that, tiger? Is lion? What is that? Is a jaguar? For all you cool cats and kittens. There you go. Beautiful. It's an animal. 
it's a female. All right, so Bella Croqueta is living in the woods. Now I'm going to start asking, not woods, the jungle, La Selva, the hot and sticky Miami 305, right? Let's get into a couple rapid questions for you. You ready for this? Carla has no idea what's coming at her right now, but here we go. Can you death drop? No. <laughs> <laughs> Why do drag and brunch fit so well together? Because the most ridiculous thing is day drinking to do, and the most ridiculous person to do it with is with a drag queen. Hello, you want to wake up and see a fucking clown. This is the clown you want to see. I, honestly, I think drag brunch is just like, it's fun because it's like Disney World for kids. It's like going to the character breakfast but for adults. Amazing. <laughs> that was actually the last time I saw you was at Sweet Liberty doing the drag brunch once a month with the the, the birdcage. What yeah. we hope they come back soon because I don't know one person who doesn't enjoy a drag brunch. I Next agree. question. Where do drag names come from and what does Carla Croquetta mean? So everybody has a different way of coming up with their drag name. Some people it's like the last underwear you wore plus your mom's maiden name. Like there's different formulas that you can come up with. Yeah. But I, that's not how mine came up. I actually used to be part of a duo, which is how we met. Yeah. Um, Julacy and Carla. And Julacy's name was so fucking difficult that we were like, we need something that's just a little bit more rounded. And yeah. it's still very Latina and Miami in your face. So it's Carla with a K. Um, and Croqueta. Croquetas are... For delicious. Me, they're like, they're, besides being absolutely delicious, they're like a ham fritter, right? They're a Cuban ham fritter. Very quintessential Miami. But like, they're the social icebreaker, whether it's like a quinceañera, a funeral, a birthday party, a divorce party, like whatever. There's mm. croquetas there. And like, everybody gathers around the croqueta table and they're like trying to have a good time. So like, that's kind of how I wanted my drag personality to be, is to be like that person that everyone gathers around when they're ready to have a good time and like feel better about themselves. Amen to that, and God bless Croquetas, and God bless Carla Croqueta, and you, Lacey, and Carla, and how we met. What's interesting, so basically, there are no rules about drag queen names. It's whatever you want. So a true, a true representation Drag in of general, there's just, like, no rules. I'm a bearded woman, and a lot of people try to tell me that, like, I can't have a beard, but, like, tell my mom she can't have a beard. She's a Cuban woman, and she's 52, and she's got a beard, bro. Like, she can't afford laser. Leave her alone. Let's go. I mean, one of the beautiful things about today... Fuck the rules, right? Let's go. Rules this is going to be a great moment for drag and a great moment for everybody who doesn't care about abiding by the rules. Let's keep on going. What's the secret to beauty? The secret to beauty is to reflect from within, honey. What's beautiful is what comes from inside of you. If you don't feel confident and you don't like, like uplift yourself, beauty won't exist. Beautiful. How do you cure a broken heart? How do you heal a broken heart? You don't. You just fucking get over it. Okay. <laughs> if you could take the stage with any human being, dead or alive, who is it? Oh, fuck. There's a, it's like a toss-up between two people, and they're two of my biggest inspirations. I'm going to go with Celia Cruz, because, like, hello, Azucar! Azucar! Girl. Um, <laughs> Celia Cruz was the pioneer of, like, Cuban rebellion during the Revolución Cubana. She got banned from her own fucking country for singing songs about going against social norms and doing things her way and not trying to abide by the laws of the land that had been taken over by a dictatorship regime. So it would definitely be Celia Cruz. She can sing. Her costumes are incredible. Her mm. stages are always lavish and luxurious. She's a live singer. I'm a live singer. So that's Celia Cruz. Yes, to Celia Cruz. Next question. If you could go with one look only the rest of your life, what is it? One look, well, besides this hair, I mean, because like this hair is like Carla. <laughs> um, damn, that's hard because we live in Miami, yeah. it's hot as fuck. Yeah, Disney Dukes on a crop top, airbrush Daisy from the Opalaka flea market. Next question, <laughs> okay. What is your go to cover song? My go to cover song, uh, when we were young by Adele. Perfect. What would be your side hustle if you didn't have this? Oh, oh, speechless well, I was a chef for nine years. So probably going back to cooking. I love cooking. You would teach what? I would probably be a teacher for cooking. I didn't say that, but I would like to teach cooking. Amazing. All right. <laughs> Dream production. Because so for those who don't know, Carla is not only beautiful in every way, shape and form, but also incredible stage producer and producer of massive shows. And I've been to many of her shows and I would just like, 
What would be a dream production to be a part of or create in your mind? Honestly, I'll, I'll, speaking truthfully, and I'm not trying to sound very cliche, but like I made my dream production already once before. You've seen this show at Intucan. Um, I created this amazing cabaret show. It was a variety show. There were singers, acrobats, comedians. I had a little bit of everything. It was an incredible variety show. Um, for me, it would just be a matter of making it my own. So mm. it would be my own production in terms of it being my venue and me coming up with like everything from the beginning. But I think I'm at a point right now where I've, I've done a lot of productions. I've done full dance productions. I've done full ensemble productions, singing productions. No. I, I think I'm ready now. I'm at a, st at a point in my life where I either need to be in like Hollywood films <laughs> or I need to be creating my own shows that like either can travel or people can come see here in Miami, but I need another big cabaret show. Well, what I will say is that you just said you lived a dream, which a lot of people would love to be able to say. So cheers to having already lived a dream and to the next one being fulfilled. Absolutely. Next, do you like my curls? I love your curls. They're so pretty. I was meaning yeah. to compliment your hair. It's so long. I was going to say, it's kind of like yours a little bit, like the curls. Next question. Biggest hurdle or hardship you've overcome and how did you do it? Oof. There have been a lot of hurdles and hardships. I'm going to stick to a professional hurdle and hardship. Yeah. Um, learning that someone that I was working with was not 100% on board with my branding. Mm. Um, someone that I had worked with for a very long time um, was just not willing to make changes to kind of go in the direction that we needed to go um to 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 be more palatable to more audiences you're being political uh no i'm being honest how'd you get over it <laughs> how did i get over it i don't think i'm over it i feel like i lost one of my best friends oh i don't right. think you ever get over. that's why when you said how do you cure a broken heart i i don't know i think you just learn to live with the hurt right like i'm an artist and I think mental health is extremely important and I'm not pushing mental health off to the side. I see a therapist every single week. I think it's important for everyone to seek mental health. Um, but I don't think you can ever heal from a broken heart. I think you learn to love differently in the future and like learn how to cope with either the loss or the effect that you had from that heartbreak. Amen to that. All right. Next one. Thoughts on glitter. Sorry? Thoughts on glitter. The more the better. There you go. Dream place that you could ever create your own drag show. Dream places. Dream location. What's your Dream ideal location. place for drag show? It's like made up. It's in Miami, but it's on the side of a cliff with like water. So I'm going to have to make my own like really tall cliff on the Biscayne Bay. Well, good thing we are literally living on a flat pancake. So we're going to have to build that. Listen, my friend lives in Edgewater and honey, their entire car was underwater. So uh, I, and it was not even like raining. It was right. packed up sewage. Did you hear about that? Gross. Let's keep my moving. Answer. What is your bed, best piece of advice you'd ever give to somebody? Excuse me. What's the best piece of advice you've ever received for somebody and have you lived it? Best piece of advice that I've received from somebody. Mm. That's hard. I've a lot of people like to give me advice, and I'm I'm very inquisitive, and I like to listen to what people tell me. Um, I think my grandmother said it best. <laughs> my grandmother always told me never to trust the people that are closest to you. Oh. Um, always, and and it's because. And she meant it in like in a very positive kind of way. She meant it like the people that are closest to you are always gonna want something from you, whether they're trying to help you or they're trying to gain something from you, there's always going to be an exchange. So be weary of what those exchanges are. And I think that my grandmother has always pointed me in the right direction. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with that. Gracias, abuela. Yeah, Mima. Yes, what is your favorite drag television show or live drag you've ever seen? I'm going to go with live drag I've ever seen because there's only one really big television show and it's not worth mentioning. Um, <laughs> <laughs> live drag production. Uh, there's so many good ones. I'm going to stick to Miami. Um, I'm going to stick to a Miami show. I think my favorite show besides my own Our House Drag Brunch. No, um, Our House Drag Brunch is really cool. Athena Dion hosts that. It's really, really fun. Um, 
in the yeah, it is. drag brunch show. It happens weekly at our house, and then ours happens um, monthly at Birdcage Brunch at Sweet Liberty. So I think brunch, any brunch show is just like interactive in your face. Awesome. All right. What is one piece of advice you would give to somebody who wants to start drag? Don't do it. <laughs> Why? Do you know how long it took me to get together? <laughs> <laughs> what is one place you long to return to, travel-wise? Uh, my heart is in the Dominican Republic, and it's just really simple. It's so beautiful there. My friend lives um, in Cabarete, which is this, like, north. It's on the north coast. It's a surf town. Mm. It's just beautiful. It's so quiet, and, like, it's Caribbean. It's tropical. Dominican Republic. Beautiful. What is the last good deed that you did? I do good deeds all day. Tell me one. <laughs> um, last good deed I did. I'm a fucking evil bitch. I don't know. Um, <laughs> all right. So not last good deed. What's your last regret? My la I don't regret shit. <laughs> I don't regret anything, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. I think it's really important to accept the things that happen in your life. So you should live with no regrets. There you go. No regrets. <laughs> Thank you, Carla. I'm going to get into the next section I like to call Yesterday, Today, and Beyond, where we discuss subject matters that are based upon your expertise, right? So you don't know what's coming at you, but I've done my research, and I know what you can give us a great perspective on. So your call, I'll name the subject. You tell me what you think about it. Okay. What it was, what it is today, or what it will be in the future. I'm super concerned about performance artists today, and you are one, obviously, and you have a community that are filled with it. What does OnlyFans mean to you? I don't even know what OnlyFans was before this. Can you explain what it is and what it means to you and your community? So OnlyFans is a platform where you can provide exclusive content for your fan base that is directed for your fan base. Um, a lot of people have taken the platform and used it as a more sexually explicit platform, but it is not only for that. Okay. Um, OnlyFans is kind of like a Patreon uh, where you can subscribe to an artist or a performer or a porn actor or a comedian or a burlesque performer or a podcast talker or a talk show host. Anybody who does anything that's performative and or visual um, can go ahead and use the OnlyFans platform to provide tailored curated content that is private and not seen on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, etc. What are your thoughts on it? Um, I think monetizing your art is extremely important and I'm extremely supportive of it. Do you see friends of yours that are stepping outside their comfort zone because of these times and doing things, maybe compromising their craft? No, I've actually seen a lot of people that do not because so a lot of people associate OnlyFans only with pornography. Um, but a lot of my artist friends, I have a lot of burlesque friends who have joined OnlyFans, a lot of drag friends who have done it. And they're very clear that they're not going to be posting any pornographic content. It's just exclusive content where let's say you, you're a fan of my work and you specifically want me to sing this song. Mm. Um, and I can go ahead and upload that there on for you because you're a subscriber of my OnlyFans. Do you have friends that have been making good money off of OnlyFans? Um, I, a lot of my friends that made good money off OnlyFans have sexually explicit content. So and people outside of that, no. Not generally, no. OnlyFans tends to be more for uh, pornographic content. as well. It's more what people want to see on there. So gotcha. sexually explicit stuff, which I'm all for. Go for it. Like, if you want to show your ass for $10 a month, do it. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask next thing from that not necessarily sexually explicit because you know that is some engaged towards only fans what does creativity mean to you uh more importantly it's been literally everything that you base your career upon creativity has creativity changed to you these past months what does creativity mean to you today i think being creative um in the present day, today means to think on your toes, but it always means that, I think. Um, being creative in the current moment is using the resources that you have, but again, that's that's in the past, present, and future. Like Being creative is taking what you have and making something bigger out of it, finding five wigs and making one giant ponytail out of it, uh, You know, like using the resources that you have and making something that is well-executed, presentable, and that is palatable for an audience that people can enjoy. Beautiful. So do you feel as if we're entering a new 
era of creativity. Like someone like you who literally spends your entire time thinking about how to awe an audience, how to create an experience. Like a lot of people are on their toes, right? Are we entering a a, a, a wave of avant-garde? Are we entering a wave of, of radicalism? What, what are we entering in the world of creativity? I think what's gonna happen um, leaning more towards the future is we're going to start seeing new creative types of spaces, new d ways of displaying art. I even said it jokingly, but it's something that I'm actually literally considering doing. I was talking to one of the venues and when I, I traveled to Amsterdam in like 2000, it was 2008 when I traveled to Amsterdam. And if you go in the red light district, they have peep shows. Um, and they, they you like a plexiglass, you're in a room by yourself and there's a plexiglass wall with a curtain. And as soon as you put money in, the curtain comes up and there's an exotic dancer behind the plexiglass wall. You cannot touch this person. So there is no like contact and you, you know, you pay per minute type thing for the dance. Um, it's, that is also kind of sexually explicit. You're giving money per article of clothing that they're taking off. Drag is kind of similar. Like we have reveals and costume changes. So I was thinking it would be really cool to, to build like a plexiglass box that I can put on wheels and like just travel around town and like yeah, pop up anywhere. But then I'm going to run into problems with like licensing and vendor licenses and stuff like that. But we'll, we'll deal with that problem later. Well, I think in terms of, first of all, I love that idea and I hope to see it. And I think today in terms of like, you know, being avant-garde and trying new ways of creativity, like people are getting away with a lot of stuff now. Like yeah. there's, there's a lot of leniencies with, with rules and, and creation, you know, do what you got to do and ask for her permission later. I look forward yeah. to seeing how you're going to push that creativity level. Next That's thing. My entire drag career has been like, ask for, you know, ask for forgiveness later. Like, fuck that. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I ask for forgiveness and for permission. Yeah, but you, you know what? I, I think, you know, drag queens are also kind of like incredible therapists, right? Because, you know, I think one thing about drag is being brutally honest, sharing your creativity, thinking outside the box, right? And like giving you exactly like a brutally honest answer to what a question. I, th I think it's beautiful. Anyway, next thing I want to ask about what does competition mean to you? I am extremely competitive by nature. Um, competition is a way for me, this is not a rule that everyone lives by, um, but competition for me is a way to prove to myself and gauge to see how creative I'm being with the resources that I have and I can display that creativity amongst like-minded individuals. Um, I think good competition is healthy. I think competition um, makes people explore realms that they have never before. I had never before a competition wore a wig like this ever. And now it is literally a staple of my drag wearing like really big, ridiculous ponytails. Um, and I think competition teaches you to think outside the box and try something different. So I, I love competition personally, I'm very competitive. So the reason I ask you is because I, I think, you know, to be a creative and an artist, you have to be competitive in some regard, especially if you're putting yourself on a stage, right? Yeah. I mean, you have to be aware of your competition and your surroundings for inspiration, for individualism, or or to join a movement. I also know you've you've competed in a lot of things, right? So competition and competitions, right? Like, what do competitions look like in the future? Like, can you gather? Can is is it online? Is it virtual? Like. What does competitions itself mean to you? Um, I think, I mean, eventually things will go back to normal, whatever the normal might be in the future. Um, I do think things might happen a little differently. I think things might start scaling back a bit. I think venues are going to restrict the sizes of the uh, amount of people, like their capacity seating that they're allowed to have, um, which is good and bad for competition, right? Like in competition, you want the audience response, you want the uproar, like that feeds into the competitors. But at the same time, it provides um, transparency for the competitors where you can all be judged without, you know, like just based on the experts versus what the crowd is also thinking. But I honestly, I'm like dumbfounded. I think like 99% of my work and you've seen is interactive. Most of the work that I do is about me breaking that fourth wall and coming into the audience and being part of the audience, me as a host, my shows, you know, 
the dancers that I hire do things that break the fourth wall. So it's it's going to be uh, challenging to think of new creative concepts that are more isolated and more within that yeah. are still visually uh, and conceptually creative and appealing. Um, but that's part of the fun of what I do, right, is challenge myself and do something creative that's new. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, last question for you. What are you most excited for today? Today? Well, I was really excited about doing this. <laughs> <laughs> what are you most excited for today in your next chapter of your life? Like I was mentioning earlier, I think I'm most excited now to put on my creator cap again and, and start finding like building a venue from the ground up is kind of the direction that I'm headed on. Um, so that's, that's kind of where I am mentally is I'm really excited to piece together a venue that eventually will be extremely monumental and a staple here in Miami. Yeah. You know, it's, it's interesting. Cause I, I'm think well, I think we're all thinking about the future and where we will be going in all of our different directions that we all do head. I'm fascinated by performance artists. Uh, cause I think performance artists, like you said earlier, always have to be on their toes, always have to be cognizant of their surroundings and always have been forward thinkers. And as we, as a society are thinking about things in the future, I'm keeping an eye on performance artists because I think it's going to be a true indicator of confidence of new expression where we actually will try something out first without being fearful. Uh, you know, a lot of people are fearful to put their toe in the water first. Drag queens aren't. Performance arts, artists aren't. So we got right into it. I can't wait to see what you got coming in the future. What I do want to ask you, Carla, to, to, to close out, is there you getting your own word in? What's a closing word that you've taken this past month or so that you'd like to share with everybody, a parting word? Floor is yours. I think it is really important to always stay true to yourself and it is okay to make mistakes, acknowledge them, learn them and grow from them. I think that is like, within this isolation, I've learned that very much because I have, we all make mistakes, we're all still learning and allow yourself to be a child, a child, allow yourself to continue to explore, never stop exploring, never stop learning. The day you stop learning, just quit. Like whatever you're doing, you know, like you could be a chef, you could be a teacher, you could be an administrator, you could be a clerk, a doctor. The day you stop having passion and you stop wanting to learn, just like move on to something different. So always keep asking questions. I think that's what I want to add, want to, want to give to the world. <laughs> Carla Croqueta, gracias como siempre. Es un placer a verte. Y hasta la próxima. Ojalá que es pronto. Uh, for you, always curious, always keep exploring, always keep learning, keep being beautiful, keep being Carla Croqueta and sharing your wisdom with the world. And I look forward to seeing everything in the future. Besitos. Un abrazo. Thank you. Bye. Follow okay. me on Instagram and Twitter. I'm Carla Croqueta, bro. We got you, boo. All right. I love you. Hasta pronto. Gracias. Bye. Bye.